share this to a group. Share there. Waiting for Facebook to gather people. Welcome to my bedroom again. Ah, this is this is fun. I'm doing it. So, um, talked about this yesterday, but I uh, I was considering committing to. 50 days of Facebook lives because my realm, my realm of possibility is podcasting and that's been my comfy zone for far too long. So um, as an act of devotion, I'm going to be devoted to arriving here for 50 days on Facebook live, um, even if I have nothing in particular to share, just to show up as a, a form of devotion to the message, um, to you, to this work. And uh, not needing everything to be um, completely clear and concise in order to show up. So today, I'm just, I think a wonderful place for me to start, even if I do this like every time, is to just harp on memes. like. These inspirational memes, and it's so funny because Instagram thinks I love it. So it just keeps being like, you love these things, we'll send them to you. We know you're taking screenshots. But I'm taking screenshots because I do not agree with many of them. I even have a highlight on my Instagram that says meme truth, and it's where I break down memes. And today's, today's meme brought to you by Instagram and someone who created it on Canva is um, this one that I keep seeing circulate. It says, if I disappear on you, I'm doing it out of self-love. Oh, where to begin? Mm. This is almost a side note, but it's something that comes up in my work often and it's just where my brain is going to first but there are three different attachment styles there is anxious avoidant and secure and this meme feels like the perfect storm for an avoidance perspective and what they're going to say to justify what they do to an anxious um, so someone who says that if I disappear on you, I'm doing it out of self-love. To me, in my body, it feels like the absolute definition of the beginning of someone's wound. And I think we can all at some point relate to a moment in our life where we have been literally physically ghosted or emotionally ghosted, where someone was present with us, holding us, being with us, tender and sweet with us and then dropped us and gone. And if you can drop yourself into remembering this moment in your life where you felt held and then drastically dropped by someone, there is a moment of utter confusion that happens in your nervous system, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, where you go, am I making this up? And this is, this is a wound that I see in so many bodies and so many people, especially in this day and age, with um, if we're looking at this through the lens of dating apps, Tinder, Bumble, OkCupid, the possibilities are, we have abundant possibilities. So we get on these things, we make connections, and then sometimes they just, ah, bah, bye. And then sometimes you actually create really profound, beautiful connections with people and then they piece out out of self-love. Okay, so here's going back to, I'll, I'll maybe start here with my very to the point perspective on this. Saying that you're going to disappear and it's an act of self-love is actually a way that you're saying, I have no idea or I am completely uncomfortable with communicating 
my desires in this relationship. Be it, I don't want to be in this relationship. This relationship isn't fruitful for me. Um, I feel triggered in this relationship. We have different values. Energetically, I'm not in a place to have a friendship with you or have a friendship in general. Um, I'm not at a place where I can commit to hanging out as often as we would need to in order to create a strong bond, like whatever it is. Anyone who's disappearing on someone else is not doing it from a place of self-love. That is coming from a place of not knowing how to articulate, not wanting to articulate, um, not willing to be uncomfortable with that conversation because that is what true vulnerability is. Vulnerability is not just oh, let me open my heart and share on Instagram and a post about how I was having a hard day and actually now I'm through it and everything is good and, and I'm so vulnerable. Like that, that's a form of being truthful and possibly vulnerable. But one of the, the deepest places that I have a feeling our society, um, and maybe it's more particular for generations that are younger, like my generations, definitely the ones younger than me, um, probably some that are older, but really in the midst of this digital age and really all, all immersed in this digital age, there we are starting to confuse, um, yes, like Chelsea, what you just said, boundaries. I think a lot of us are starting to confuse what a boundary is. A boundary is not, I'm disappearing out of self-love and then not communicating with the other person what happened because what happens is leaving that other person feeling completely dropped, confused, and most likely spiraling to make rational sense out of something that is irrational. Um, yeah, and I can give an example. I, I can give so an example of it. Oh my God, this is, this is like, my wounding, like my wounding in general, my particular flavor of wounding is a lot of this because going back to the attachment styles, I was an anxious attachment for a lot of my life, most of my life. I was an anxious attachment style. And these styles are typically cultivated from childhood. And it could, it could literally be because your parents fed you an hour later than what you were supposed to be fed at when you were a baby, like at like 12 months old, maybe you needed to be fed and you weren't. And so your body, your physiological response was <sighs> attach, 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 attach. I'm not going to be fed when I need to be fed. So I need to rely on you to help me, help me, help me. And then an avoidant, uh, that was the anxious though. The avoidant is more like um, anything that gets too close to me, anything that looks or smells like relationship is threatening my independence. And it's very often that anxious and avoidance find each other, they match up. And why? I can go into that just briefly. I don't want to get too off topic, but secure attachment styles generally meet early on. They meet in college, they meet in childhood, they, they, they feel very secure in who they are and what they want and they allow the other person to have that kind of independence. So they just find each other quickly and maybe they're in relationship or maybe they're married. Uh, avoidance and avoidance don't have any glue to keep them together. Nobody is calling the other one back because both of them have the biggest fear of getting too close is a threat to my independence and freedom, not together. Uh, anxious and anxious work. Uh, they're both kind of like clinging on to each other and sometimes it can cause suffocation and codependency to like the extreme, but neither one of them are breaking up with the other one. So you could keep going into the cycle until someone else intervenes and is like, this is not healthy, do not be together. Or they come to that conclusion on their own. And then there's like the divine, like, oh, magnetism or not so divine magnetism between an anxious and an avoidant where they just perfectly fit into each other's wounds. The avoidance like, ah, I want love and like I really, really, really want it, want it, but if anytime someone gets close to me, it's probably gonna repel me in the opposite direction. And they keep ending up with anxious people who remind them of that. And so they go into the woe is me. This always happens. I always get close to someone and then they cling to me. So they stay in that victim mentality and they continuously are like a magnet to people who are looking for closeness. The anxious person has that constant fear of no one will ever be as close to me as I need and as, as I want. Secures don't have time for that and avoidance secretly love that feeling of being desired and craved. So they just continuous in this 
continue to be in this cycle. This meme reminds me of this because it's, an, it's a way that someone who is either anxious or avoidant will justify their actions of not knowing how to communicate their needs. And often, I will also drop in this note that, um, hmm. yeah, I'm gonna go to a different note actually, that there is another meme that's circulating around I, I love. And I'm not gonna do it justice, but it says something along the lines of, don't get too caught up in the idea of self-love being letting go of things that could actually deeply serve you. Because before you know it, you'll have spent your entire life saying no to everything that could have brought riches, something along those lines. And that hits home for me because I feel that so many people today are saying no to situations that are actually the deepest possibility of growth in the name of self-love. Canceling plans, canceling relationships, canceling friendships, because they are not willing to sit in the discomfort of saying no to something or actually being vulnerable and sharing their truth. And it's a way we hide. Self-love and self-care in one sense is what makes us who we are, makes us feel good, makes us feel alive, makes us feel free. If we get enough nourishing food to eat, we're gonna feel full in our belly so we can go out into the world and spread our message. If we're surrounded by people who love us and treat us well, we're nourished in that way so we can go out into the world and uh, pay it forward. But when we're saying no to people who are not like us or are clinging to us too much, or are disregarding our needs or in relationship, let's say you're actually in a very committed relationship um, and you're not physically disappearing on them, but you're emotionally disappearing on them in the name of self-love because you just don't have time to deal with that. You're actually not serving, you're definitely not serving yourself, but you're also not serving them because you are feeling, you're feeling in a sense like a hole in your heart. Let's, let's give an example that this person isn't holding space for you when you are going through hardship and you feel it, you're like, oh, I just came to you to express something that's hurting my heart and you didn't know how to hold that. If you emotionally withdraw and do not share with them how that made you feel, you are not serving them because there is something you feel they do not see. They don't know that they're not holding space for you. And who else are they doing that to? Their mom, their friends? Are they also trampling over their friends' opinions or thoughts or fears, not listening to it? Maybe they were never taught that. Maybe they did not have a mother who taught them how to slow down and hold space for others or a father who was present in their life. So if you neglect the opportunity to actually come forward to them and say, you know what I would love more of? I would love more of you you to be holding space for me when I share these things. I would love more of you holding my heart as I look into your eyes and share how bad my day was and not try to fix it, but just be with me. You sharing to them what you want more of. Yes, it is vulnerable and it is not the easiest thing to do. Actually, the easiest thing to do is what that meme says, which is disappear. And you can disappear today, tomorrow, in a month, in a year. You can just keep disappearing, keep disappearing, keep disappearing. But the actual growth of learning how to be truly what is now called vulnerability is not in disappearing and building these boundaries. It's actually diving headfirst into feeling what it is that's lacking in a situation and communicating it. Does not mean you stay in the relationship. In fact, oftentimes it could mean that you, you definitely leave the relationship. Let's say you're dating someone and there is a hole that's not being filled, something that you need. It serves them to know this for the next relationship they are in. It serves you to share this, to take up space and to be uncomfortable in speaking what it is that you need. It just drives me crazy how many, how many, how many times I'm hearing people say like, 
I'm not being heard, I don't know how to speak my truth, or I'm not being heard in my truth, I need to set boundaries, I need to walk away, I need to walk away from what is no longer serving me. We are missing the crucial piece of speaking what it is that would serve us. How does the universe know what to bring us if we're not even talking about it and we're not even asking for it? Because this partner, I talked about this yesterday, the right person for you is gonna feel like the wrong person at some point. The right person, whoever it is, your current husband, or your future partner, the right person for you is going to feel like the wrong person. And if you have not learned how to sit and not disappear and stay in the discomfort, the right person, when they feel like the wrong person, might not be in your life anymore because you walked away because you didn't know how to express to them what you needed more of in the relationship when you are perfectly capable of doing so. And these memes, ah, they're, ah, they are taking us further as our generation of this very like, do what serves you, like walk away what's no longer serving you. It's taking us away from devotion. And I, I speak on this because I'm so in, I feel I've, I've walked away a lot. I've walked away from things that could potentially serve me. I was, I just released this, a message on this in my podcast yesterday. I was interviewed on someone else's show and I loved the interview so much I put it on my show where we talk about not belonging. And I have had a habit and a knack for walking away from things that don't serve me. I almost did it two weeks ago. There was a very clear flashing red light in my life that said, this is not serving you, you know, not serving you on the surface, not serving you, not serving you, not serving you, not serving you. And I had a call with my mom about it. I had a call with a friend about it, just saying like unpacking it, verbalizing, not needing to fix it or figure out, but just saying the unbiased facts. This happened in the presence of this person. They said this thing, I felt this sensation in my body. And then the more I started to look at this, the more I started to realize that in this friendship, I was actually dimming my own light with them. They didn't do anything. They showed up exactly how they are. But in their presence, their presence was so powerful and they just said what it is, what they wanted to say and were who they were. I felt my surface response of being like, oh, I need to go hide. This relationship isn't serving me. They're not, they're not, asking questions the way I want them to be asking questions about my life. I should just walk away, go away now. Old response. The more I slowed down though, as the, the new and improved me doing all this work, the more I saw I was actually willingly not speaking what it was that I needed. Cause that's scary. Cause that's scary. Uh, it's scary to speak something truthful about you and have your friend immediately turn the direction back on themselves. You know, people do this all the time. Like you're like, I had a bad day, blah, blah, blah happened. And they're like, I had a bad day, blah, blah, blah happened. Um, and the actual thing to do of what I'm saying here is to speak up and say, what I would really love right now is just to have some space held for me. Can you listen just for about five minutes of me expressing my heart around my day and just hold, I just need you to be with me. And then after that, let's, I wanna hear all about your day, but for now, can we, can we do it this way? And then see what happens. If you get a, a response like, no, that's not gonna work for me, I need it only this way, then you take ownership of that position. And again, don't disappear. We don't wanna create wounds in already very anxious people. We have, our society is filled with anxious people. That's how we create wounds. We ghost on people, then we, our wounds of once being ghosted create their new wounds of ghosting on them. And then we just create this ghost wound in the name of self-love when really it's the total opposite of devotion to love. It's creating wounds where wounds might have not been before. Whereas we can avoid all of that by first giving it a shot to see if we can speak our truth of what it is that we need and see how that is received. And then go from there. Make a judgment call after that. Sometimes we get exactly what it is we needed just by asking, but they don't know what it is that you need or want if you don't tell them first. And it starts with one person feeling in their body, feeling in their intuition, feeling in their heart what it is that they need, and then being the one to speak it and not wait for the opposite to happen. Not waiting for the opportunity of someone to say, hmm, I really get the feeling that you're not feeling held and heard 
as much as you want. Do you want me to start providing that? Like they don't know. If they knew, they would have already done that for you. Um, yeah, and I just, with all of that said, I wanna ground back into, into my very real feeling that Disappearing is not an act of self-love. Um, outside of the realm of abusive relationships, like we're not talking here about being uh, needing to go into a witness protection society, society witness witness protection program, and needing to disappear. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about day-to-day -day connections with people that we meet, meet online, in person, that we form bonds with that we are now holding. We are responsible for holding each other. And holding each other does not mean being in each other's lives. Holding each other means expressing and communicating. Communication is everything. Like we've heard this so many times, but what really is communication? Communication could even be something as simple as sending someone a message that says, I feel like disappearing because I'm afraid of this relationship. I'm still here and I'm afraid. Even sharing that you feel like disappearing but you're not disappearing is an act of self-care and of being there for them at the same time. There's a way to have both. And there's a way to create closure. If the world had more closure, mm, be a lot less uh, emotional trauma if we all just learned how to Say we need closure and, and here we go. I'm creating closure now. Like you create, you begin to create closure simply by saying this isn't right for me and I need to create closure. And sometimes these messages, like some, I've, I've done a couple like texting one-on-one -on -one workshops with my girlfriends where there was someone I was dating like years ago. And this is a particular memory where I, I knew that relationship wasn't right. It was just like not what either one of us wanted and we could both feel it, but neither one of us were doing anything about it. And it was a lot of that hem hawing. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Good weekend? Yeah, me too. Blah, blah. And I just didn't want to create space for that in my life. So I wrote this long text message saying, hey, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to let you know that I've been feeling into this partnership and relationship and it's really not feeling like it's serving me or you. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It really has nothing to do with you and everything. Blah, 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 blah. Just all of this, all these things. And we sat with this text and we became very intentional. Like just start with what's happening in your life right now. What's one message you can formulate and use and throw your intention into that one message. You don't have to start with like cleaning up the 100 things that you feel you have going on. Just what's one thing that's really present in your life that you feel like disappearing and ghosting on that you can commit to not doing that. And summon in a trusted friend for you to workshop that message. By the time we finished that over like dinner, we got it down to three sentences. I have so loved getting to know you. I'm in a space right now where I need to focus on my career. Let me know if there's anything unsaid that you want to further discuss. Something like that. Where I spoke what I needed and then didn't say, Bye. You know, like, uh, I don't want to do blah, blah, blah. I'm done with this. Instead saying, I'm here. And if they say, yes, I want to take you up on that offer, that's when you enter the masculine space holder and you have to ask yourself, how much time can I dedicate to this? And you let them know beforehand, I've got 10 minutes. We're going to structure it like this. First, you'll share what you need. Then I'll share what I need. And then we'll spend the last two minutes on uh, sharing what we've loved about getting to know each other. Like you create some structure to it. That way it's, that, that way it's easier to handle instead of like, oh no, we're they took me up on this offer to continue talking about this and I really, now I really, really wanna disappear. Take back that control by creating structure to it and don't be afraid to stick to that structure, whatever it is that you said the structure was. First we'll do this for two minutes, then we'll do this for two minutes, then we'll do this for two minutes. And you have your timer out. Like that actually serves them. They go deeper into their feminine, whether it's a man or a woman, when they know that they're being held in their emotions. Because emotions come up. 
And that to me is the highest act of devotion to love is to let people feel what they feel because maybe they feel incredibly upset and sad and destroyed and heart open that you no longer want to continue this relationship. And massive healing can be done by you holding space for them to speak that. How many times in your life have you experienced someone saying, this relationship no longer serves me. I want to hold space for you. If something comes up around that, let's get on the phone for 10 minutes. I've rarely had that happen. I mean, really, I've had that kind of space, that tight space being held for me from my teachers and the people I've worked with in the realm of embodied relationship, but just like some guy I meet on Bumble, no. Or some girlfriend that I've ended a relationship or a friendship with, no. Like I haven't had that, that doesn't happen. But we can do that, we can create a new paradigm of how to create closure in the name of self-love rather than disappearing. Because I have never heard of someone having an experience they've been ghosted on and they said, wow, I felt so much love in that. That person's really devoted to love and I feel it. They were healing for me. I've never felt that from someone who's ghosted on me and I don't think that every time I've ghosted on someone, which is a handful of times, if not more, they felt that. I don't think they felt that. Ah, <sighs> so, hmm, don't buy into that bullshit meme. It's not true. Ah, <sighs> yeah. Thanks for watching this. It's actually really fun. <laughs> Day two of 50 days of showing up. Oh, it's gonna be a wild ride. Um, if you have any memes you want me to break down, drop them below. Cause this is actually a really wonderful way for me to hop on here and uh, debunk some of these that don't, don't sit right with me. And it feels really purposeful too, to be able to debunk these things in particular. So thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any memes or comments or questions just comment below and I'll see you all tomorrow.